Let me give you a brief introduction into the paradigm of meaningful tourism. Meaningful tourism refers to a new paradigm for the post-pandemic development of global tourism. The term was first coined by me, the director of the Meaningful Tourism Center. My name is Professor Dr. Wolfgang Fjallgaard, and this was first coined in 2021. Meaningful tourism concentrates on quality, satisfaction, and benefits for all six major stakeholders in tourism the guests, the host communities, the staff, the companies, the governments, and the environment and the future generations, therefore. It is meant to advance and further develop the previous concept of sustainable tourism and responsible tourism by enhancing in a holistic way the predominantly supply-side oriented sustainable tourism approach and the focus on restricting the behavior of visitors in the responsible tourism approach towards a concept which covers both demand and supply side and concentrates on the positive effects and the benefits for all stakeholders involved, such as for the guests or visitors to enjoy tourism services, creating satisfaction based on the benefits of products which are more precisely adapted to their specific demands, going beyond relaxation and sightseeing towards new experiences. For host communities to benefit from instead of being encumbered by the encounter with the visitors. For the staff in tourism and hospitality service providing companies to benefit from better year-round working conditions, from recognition as hosts instead of servants, of full-time careers and meaningful work. For service providing companies to have a sustainable perspective, year-round business, motivated staff, higher margins and lower marketing costs thanks to online and offline recommendations by satisfied guests or customers. For governments to obtain employment opportunities for their citizens, to enjoy increased tax income, generate a more evenly spatial and temporal distribution of tourism over the year and in the whole country and friendly international relations. And finally for the environment and future generations, the chance of mitigated environmental damage based on the feeling of embeddedness and belonging by all stakeholders. The stakeholders are not enemies. Their interests do not have to be contradictory if tourism is organized in a meaningful way. The task is not to balance the different interests, but to align them as all stakeholders are looking for quality, satisfaction and benefits. The SARS-CoV-2 pandemic has accelerated the search for a new approach to global tourism and provided the opportunity to rethink tourism development. As Dr. Tyler Griffey, the former Secretary General of UWTO, has been optimistically stating, tourism will not bounce back, but will leap forward into a new world, a new normal, a better and more sustainable world. However, with international tourism restarting in spring 2022, it seems that many discussions and many pledges for a better new normal are already forgotten and below cost tickets for air transport and overcrowded city centers are already back. In fact, the need for a paradigm shift in global tourism existed long before the SARS-CoV-2 pandemic. The very success of international tourism, with five times the number of trips in 2019 compared to the year 1980, has made a mockery of the idea of hospitality and ran in many places a juggernaut over local nature, local culture, authenticity, diversity and serendipity, negatively impacting 
satisfaction levels of all stakeholders involved. Gigantic cruise ships, all-inclusive resorts, overcrowded beaches and Disney-fied tourist cities are all examples of forms of tourist organization which in effect prevent meaningful guest-host encounters and lead to price wars between providers of increasingly identical service offers. <coughs> Sorry. International tourism before the pandemic developed strongly in quantitative ways, but no structures were de developed to support the quality of the experience of both guests and hosts. By 2019, over-tourism, ecological degradation and increasing protests of host communities already signaled the need to change the structure of global tourism. Tourism started to change its image from being a provider of joy, jobs and peace to an image of being a force of destruction and pollution. At the same time, the growing number of non-Western tourists felt treated as second-class customers with compliance to notions of respect of hierarchy, religious dietary restrictions and other differences in behavior and culture seen as a deviation of the normal behavior of modern travelers and maybe as signs of an immature market. So the necessity to rethink tourism is also based on the insight that tourism today goes beyond recreation. Only a minority of the people affluent enough to afford tourism, which is about 20% of mankind when it comes to international tourism, and maybe to a third of mankind when it comes to domestic tourism. Only a minority of these people travel to rest their limbs and muscles. Instead, travel is done for increasingly diverse and often mixed purposes, including, for instance, digital nomads combining online work and travel, uh, people visiting their friends and relatives living in different places, business tourism, mice tourism, which cannot completely be substituted by Zoom calls, as we all learned, to name just a few. Religion, culture, education, health, many different special interests, second homes, and many more need to be added, creating a whole universe of unforced mobility motivations. The need for bodily relaxation is not the key purpose of tourism anymore as the majority of people who can afford tourism, especially international tourism, spend their working time sitting in front of a computer or in meetings, rather than sweating in a coal mine, a factory or on a field. The wish to refresh the brain and the wish for self-actualization by new experiences and new inspirations, as well as gaining social capital gained importance already before the COVID-19 pandemic. However, the sudden experience of the fragility of life and the possibility of a shattering of the perceived stability of personal circumstances, regardless of personal wealth, has led to a new enforcement of the criticism of shallow consumerism and 3B, beach, beer, boredom, or 3C, see sun sex or the Chinese variation, sightseeing, shopping, selfies, kind of tourism. Further increasing the demand for meaningful tourism beyond simple recreation and sightseeing. Meaningful tourism also takes into account the changes in the age structure of travelers, with international, especially leisure travelers, increasingly belonging to the age cohort of 50 plus. It also reflects the changes in the setup of families traveling, which increasingly no longer follow the mama, papa plus two shared biological children pattern. Instead, we have patchwork families, three generation groups, greater groups of families, including aunties and uncles, non heterosexual families, and so on. Meaningful tourism also acknowledges the fact that both travelers and service providers in international tourism, hospitality and aviation no longer predominantly belong to the North American or European cultural background. Therefore, 
and if we recognize that what is considered as meaningful is informed not only by personal tastes or destination marketing, but also by the influence of peers, celebrities and user-generated content on social media. Taking a short look back into the development of the scientific analysis of tourism and hospitality, concerns about the economic, social and especially ecological consequences of mass tourism began to be discussed following the growth of domestic and especially international tourism after the Second World War already in the 1970s. In 1987, the Brundtland Report, Our Common Future, successfully introduced the notion of sustainability, <coughs> concentrating on uh, the economic, environmental and social responsibility of tourism, which also is reflected in the fact that the global sustainable tourism criteria, which were established in 2008, are following this three-pillar approach. Then in 2015, the 17 SDGs, uh, Sustainable Development Goals, were declared by the United Nations as a major guideline for the period up to 2030. The major tourism organizations, including UNWTO, however, picked only three of them as relevant for tourism, namely the SDG 8, which is Inclusive and Sustainable Economic Growth, 12, which is Sustainable Consumption and Production, and 14, Sustainable Use of Ocean and Marine Resources. As a result, the diminished concept of sustainable tourism is still followed today. The European Travel Commission published, for example, in 2020, 12 Sustainable Tourism Indicators, STIs, which still concentrate on social, economic and uh, environmental dimensions only. Some experts like Wheeler had argued already in the 1990s that such a concept of sustainable tourism could be easily turned into a public relation tool for addressing the criticism of the impact of tourism while allowing essentially the same behavior as before in the form of what is called today greenwashing. Meanwhile, many consumers started to become more ecologically aware, showing increased sensitivity, especially to the environmental quality of destinations. One result of such critical approaches, both in academia and in the industry, was the development of an enlarged concept of responsible tourism by Professor Harold Goodwin in 2011. He declared that the idea of responsible tourism has at its core the imperative to take responsibility, to take action. Consumers, suppliers and governments all have responsibilities. The ambition of responsible tourism is to address the impacts of mainstream tourism, to enhance the positive and to reduce the negative. So Goodwin explains that responsible tourism is not the same thing as sustainable tourism. Sustainability is a goal, a goal which can only be achieved by people taking responsibility together with others to achieve it. Responsi responsible tourism is about taking responsibility for making tourism sustainable. It's about what people do to address the many specific challenges we face. The approaches of responsible tourism have also been criticized as merely admonishing tourism actors to be a little more, bit more caring and responsible and to clean up the sharper edges of their poor practices, but failing to recognize the structural fault of a system of global tourism that is set up unjustly and extracts profits through exploitable practices. The alternative is proposed, for instance, by uh, the author Higgins Del Boyle, is to establish a community-centered tourism framework that begins with the redefinition of tourism in order to place the rights of local communities above the rights of tourists for holidays and the rights of tourism corporates to make profit. <coughs> Why locals 
should have higher levels of rights in how to deal with the many forms of traveling which are not for holidays remain, however, unanswered questions. UNESCO World Heritage Sites, for instance, are designated to support both their preservation and the ability of everybody to visit them, not to be closed as a property of the local community with which they are more or less historically connected. <coughs> Sorry again. Learning from the debates about the structure of tourism in the last 50 years, meaningful tourism is proposed as a new paradigm taking aboard all original five dimensions of sustainability, so giving the aspect of global justice and equity more importance and introducing a more balanced and holistic set of criteria and key performance indicators, KPIs. The equal rights of guests and hosts are recognized, but also the interests of employees working in tourism and hospitality service providers and of the companies themselves at a time when the shortage of staff and the negative economic effects of the pandemic are core issues. Not the least are also to receive the interest and responsibilities of the government on different levels and of the environment and by default the future generations. Meaningful tourism is not to be mixed up with some ideas about more meaningful travel because meaningful travel has been used since a couple of years but concentrates according to several topical websites which can be found mostly on the idea to enrich your life so that you can return inspired, aware, and grounded, eager to share and teach others of your life experiences. And another quote, many people feel that meaningful travel is strictly about going on a volunteering vacation, but there are many ways to make your travel meaningful and to enrich your travels while making your life and other people's life better. There's even a tour operator company, Meaningful Travel Experiences, which, and I quote, allows travelers to visit destinations with the knowledge that in doing so, they are supporting local people and businesses in honest ways. They are deeply immersing themselves in other cultures and they are experiencing a destination meaningfully. Airbnb declares travel as more meaningful if it creates meaningful memories. As you can notice, all this is carefully avoiding the term tourism and talking instead about travel. However, as Eduardo Santander, the CEO of the European Travel Commission, points out in the online Meaningful Tourism training program, which was developed by the Meaningful Tourism Center, the better new normal Talib Ripai has been speaking about needs to cover all those going abroad, not just the elite few who see themselves as travelers and look down on the tourists. Thank you very much for your attention and I'm sure that if you have more interest in meaningful tourism, we can help you and uh, be on our service with our trainings and our other support. Thank you very much.